Og sæt. Okay, lad Ja. Skal vi videre? Ja, det er jo nok. 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 Det er jo Theo, first of all, why Everton and why now? Everton, um, you know, after speaking to the gaffer and um, particularly Wayne as well, um, I felt like the club was, you know, on the up. Uh, I felt that with the manager, seemed to get the best out of the players, especially when first coming in. Um, and just the plans for the future of the club, and I felt like I wanted to be part of that. Uh, fantastic history, and I want to make that history present. Uh, I want this club to push on and, you know, try and reach the levels that, you know, I feel like it can with the players, particularly that are coming in. Um, you can get a sense that it's a club that's, you know, financially can, you know, attract, you know, you know, big players. Uh, and for me, that was, uh, you know, the main attraction and getting a chance to, you know, obviously had a brief spell with with the manager uh, with England, uh, and I just felt like I wanted more of that, um, and. You know, I, I want to be part of his plans and, you know, part of something. And this felt right, and I'm so pleased, I'm really pleased. How did that conversation go with Wayne then? What did he say to you? How did he persuade you? He said all the golf courses are great, so you should come <laughs> up and. <there. laughs> um, a bit colder though. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um. Well, I've obviously I played a lot of football with with, with Wayne. Um, no, he's not great at golf. He said, <laughs> but he's not. Um, and I just wanted to get a structure of how the club worked and you know what the the players are, are like and because obviously when you're used to something for so long it's uh it's a big you know decision to to change things but I felt it was right for me to do that and I just got a sense from Wayne that you know he was, he was hungry and the club was eager to push on and that's why he wanted to join like I'm sure he would have had you know other decisions to make but he felt like this was the right place and uh, I totally agree with him and I was um yeah it was a long long process but we're in the end now yeah you say long process. Was it right that you were stood in the canteen in training gear, watching training on Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, I was right. I wanted to be part of it all. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't as yet. Um, things weren't properly signed off as yet. But uh, I, you know, I got to see how it all worked from there. And yeah, I just wanted to go out there and train. I, I, my first training session was on Monday. Last one was the last one. Um, and uh, I trained yesterday on my own. And um, today will be the first time I trained with the team. And um, yeah, but I know I know quite a few of the players there. I'll, I'll settle in really fine. Yeah. In terms of the personal motivations in coming here as well, at times you feel that you don't necessarily get the credit you deserve. You look at last season, for instance, 19 goals, 29 starts. Yeah, I think um, uh, you know I'll be judged on goals, and I was very pleased, obviously, last season with my goals um, that I scored, considering the, the minutes played as well. Um, and that's you know that's what I want to bring into this team. I want to bring you know the goals and assists and that threat and. You know, even that unselfish play when you can drag other players away, uh, attract other players. But yeah, I was very pleased with you know that goal tally. Obviously, you know, just being behind you know Harry, who obviously he's on a, a new level completely, and obviously Delhi as well. Um, so being the third player there, I was like I say, I, I can't ask for more. Um, but yeah, I want to push on, and you know, still quite a long season ahead. Uh, I want to be part of you know pushing Everton at that table um, because it's all about points in the end, and anything I can contribute to the end of the season, you know, I'm going to be pleased to definitely. Sam, I suppose that threat that Theo speaks about there is a big factor in your decision to bring him here as well, isn't it? There's no doubt about that at all. I think that um, uh, once it's a fresh start, I think that um, you know when you you got a, got a player that um, has been at one club for a long period of time and and decides that he wants to move on and and uh, forge his way into a new career and and. You you know him over many many years, and you look at his record and, and and say to yourself, if that's an opportunity for you to move forward, then it would be very nice if he would consider joining Everton Football Club, and and that's always been very positive from from when we first started negotiations. So I think that uh, I think that um, f for us, if he repeats what he did even this year with his short appearances. <laughs> He's got goals, and uh, and last year's appearances is 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 exceptionally good from a player from a wide position. Um, may the, may occasionally have played up front, but for us that's a, a very important ingredient where we are short in in terms of creating and scoring goals at the moment, and it adds great firepower to hopefully to our squad. A relatively good price in this transfer window. Would you say? Time will tell. Yeah, <laughs> with with every signing, I think that every signing. 
you know, you you have uh, the key performance indicators, which are very good. The experience of the Premier League, he's seen it all. It, it, you know, in, at this league, unlike Jenk, who's only just getting here, which may be more difficult for him. So uh, there's a settling in period for everybody, whether you move in this country, you know, whether you move from abroad, and hopefully settles very quickly and enjoys his time here. And uh, we're here to support him. All the staff are here to support him to achieve as much as he possibly can while he's with us. More to come in this window? Uh, uh, you're being no, I don't it, think right? so. I think that um, we would be more in... in in, in in the terms of where we are at the moment, we're moving players on, I think that the the squad is too big. Um, there's a, there's 30, 33 players here at the moment, and I think that from my point of view, that means that uh, uh, reducing that squad or those squad numbers is important for for me and the football club and the players that may may leave. We don't know which or who they are, because you you're you're waiting for other clubs to come and um, show an interest uh, but certainly I think moving a few players on now is is the order for us um, keeping players fit then um, keep, it, keep Seamus Coleman's close to coming back he's back in training I think that that's another another bonus for us and um, um, Michael Keane's back so uh, you know the squad is uh, getting stronger hopefully and getting bigger and, and certainly we need to turn our results around starting Saturday and um, um, be interesting to see the reaction from the players after the poor 44 minutes they played in the second half at Tottenham and In terms of moving players on we're hearing that Aaron Lennon's been linked with the likes of Newcastle and Burnley has there been anything in that? I don't know I, I think that uh, I'll probably find out at some stage or other, but obviously that lies in the hands of, uh, of uh, the chairman and um, and Steve, the uh, director of football, and they handle all that side of it, all that, all those um, uh, negotiations, if and when they go on. And Theo, to start on Saturday? Well, you wait and see, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> Theo, are you ready to start on Saturday? Do you know what? The first thing I want to do is get to know my teammates today, train for the first time, because I've not... You know, been on the pitch of them as yet, and I'm excited to do that. Uh, I can't thank, obviously, enough the support I've had here. It's been so good. You know, everyone's been so good to me straight away, and so nice. And um, even you know, all the messages I've had from you know the Arsenal fans, and particularly, you know, obviously being there for 12 years, it was um, you know it was massive for me. Uh, it was quite emotional, uh, and the reception I've had from Everton fans, and I'm obviously really looking forward to going to Goodison Park. It's got a lot of history. It's a it's a great football club. And it's like I say, that's why I want to be part of it. But First priority is uh, first training session today for me. Just on Arsenal, though, I just wonder what kind of a state do you feel that you've left the club in? Um, well, when I when I when I found that I was coming here, I was had to go there at night just to pick up all my stuff in all bin bags. So it was like, it was quite uh, quite honestly so <laughs> surreal. That's for you, didn't it? Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few of those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for but, your service. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I've um, you, you know I'm sneak sure. In and sneak out. I'm whatever. sure. I'm sure. You know, um, after talking to the gaffer, I'm sure I'll get some time to go down. I've had so many messages to try and catch up with people, and it's been very overwhelming but um, slowly but surely getting through those messages but I will at some point go back there and uh, do my proper goodbyes because I feel like that would be the right way to do it but we, we do play them very soon as well which I'm looking forward to What, what kind of reception will you expect there then? Um, you know I, I've always had so much time for the fans and they've been great to me from start to finish through all the ups and downs and um, I can't obviously like I say thank them enough and um, I'm sure you know like I say it's part of my family Arsenal so um, now I'm here but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine yeah how do you feel about Arsene Wenger now? Obviously, I had a lot of nice things to say about it yesterday, but is that kind of, I don't know, the frustration of not getting as much game time as you wanted, does that kind of um, affect the relationship between the two? No, look, I've always had so much respect for the manager. There's always, with any player, if you're not playing, you're not you're going to be upset, but you need to try and dig deep and try and push to get into that position. For whatever reason, it didn't happen this year. Um, you know, that's why, I've obviously, I've moved on. Um, but I want to just work hard for this team. Simple as that. Um, you know, I've got so much respect, and you know, the, I've known him since I was 16. Um, and to bring in a young player in, I have belief in him. Um, like I say, I can't thank him enough for that. But now, obviously, I've got a new challenge. Um, you know, a new manager. I want to impress uh, and get the 
get the ball rolling, definitely. And have you left behind a club that's in difficulty? How many more moment? questions Surely do you want? With the <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like, yeah, Sam, every so week, isn't it? training uh, <laughs> at 11 o'clock, you know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> um, just with the San- Sanchez situation, I wonder what you make of that. Um, I, obviously, I'm not, I'm not being there at the moment in time. I'm not really going to... It would be unfair to me to comment on anything not knowing what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure Arsenal will, will get it all resolved. Uh, I'm, like I say, I'm an Everton player now, so I'm, my, mo- my main focus is, is today training and preparing properly for the first game, which, funny enough, could be against Kieran Gibbs. So, yeah. yeah I've got to throw in there. <laughs> World Cup as a motivating factor as well. Um, again, it's, it's one thing that's not on my concerns at the moment in time. I feel like if I perform well for Everton, that's just my main target. That's what I want this club to push on. I want them to win points. I want them to improve, uh, and hopefully, I can contribute that. You know, we're we're cross that bridge when we come to it. But yeah, like I say, I want to be, you know, I want to be here first. That's my main target. I don't like to look too far ahead. That's that I won't I won't achieve anything if I do that. The weekend marks Lukaku's thousandth game of his managerial career. Yeah, it's a great achievement, obviously, and uh, to be part of hopefully a winning team for that is something special for personally for the manager, uh, and I'm sure you can celebrate. But like I said, it's going to be a tough job. We need to work hard, but I think the support and the passion that around the club just needs to get into all the players, and hopefully, with you know, like myself and Jane coming in, we can, um, you know, it's going to be a great receptions, and that could hopefully just give that extra boost that we need. Sam, what does that milestone mean to you? Um, well, obviously, uh, I, I wasn't thinking that we're going to get there. Like I mean, so <laughs> I, I, I actually thought I was already there when I when I. Um, left uh, Crystal Palace because um, if you counted Limerick I was well past a thousand games but unfortunately there those Limerick games were not added because it wasn't a full-time professional football club so having to come back and now uh, got the nod last week that this was going to be a thousand game I'm absolutely delighted that uh, I've hit that milestone of course with, uh, with and, and mainly all in the Premier League you know the ambition to play at the top level when you're a footballer which I managed to do uh, but then to manage at the top level um, in in the Premier League and and uh, experience so many different clubs with so so many different cultures has been a great journey for me. And like I've said that many many times, um, I've never worked since I've left school. So uh, this is just another continuation of what's been a you know for me um, a, a lovely way to uh, to, to uh, spend my time and work in this industry. So. Uh, so I look forward to the lads making sure we win tomorrow, um, and uh, and I can celebrate it that little bit more if we get those those three points. What's your advice to those starting out in management? Now? Those starting out in management, survival. This is it's the first first thing on your mind, and uh, and survival is about um, understanding what's needed at that football club with the players you have at your disposal. You may have many many theories and many thoughts about how you might want to play about how you may may want to consider your football but the biggest asset you can have is judging whether those players can play that way and if they if they can't quite play the way that you want adjust so they play to their strengths to get results because results are what keep you in a job and then results gives you the experience results get you in the limelight and results allow you to move up the league and get a bigger and bigger job. Has it changed you? Yeah, I'm not the same person I was when I first started. I've done many, many things o- over the years to modify and adjust as a manager. To stay ahead of the game, um, it's always been one of my main priorities and what the next level is and where is it coming from. And, and we want to not not follow anybody else we want to be at the forefront of what it is and I think that everybody's in that field now more than ever before um, so so it's always very interesting what new ideas come along and uh, and implementing those ideas into into your club and will they help and and that is not it's not for me it's always been outside of football a lot of the stuff I've implemented in the game has come outside of it's in the world of sport, but come outside of football, um, you know. So I think we we can all go around football clubs and see what they do and do this, and we all do similar. But somewhere outside of there, in some other sport, maybe something that can take you forward. You know, obviously it's been a, a frustrating time for you so far this season. But do you feel this is perhaps the right time or the right stage of your career? And what are your ambitions? 
Yeah, no, it's like I said before, it was um, obviously a very difficult decision, but I just felt it was the right one at this moment in time. You know, obviously I have a young family as well that I need to take into account. Um, but, you know, being still only 28, I feel fit as I ever have done. Um, and I just want to be playing football and working hard and, you know, making this club be where I think I believe it can be. You know, like I say, with the development of the stadium, the plans, the players coming in, I felt like I want to be part of something, part of something that's, you know, going forward. Um, and, you know, like I said before, getting a chance to work with the manager again. I know I had that brief spell and I just, I really enjoyed it and I want to be part of that. Uh, and that belief the manager had bringing me in, yeah, um, you know, it made my decision very easy, yeah. Do you feel that there's <coughs> pressure on you, but pressure in a good way that you might not have had so much at Arsenal recently? I feel like every day is any is pressure anyway. Um, it's just how you deal with it. I'm sort of someone I like to be better than I was the day before. I'm sure everyone believes that in any job they do. And um, I feel like this place will get even more out of me. And I'm, I'm just hungry to get going again. Because obviously, like you say, it's been frustrating. But it is what it is. And I'm, it's a new challenge for me. Uh, and I'm ready to go. Um, and I just think there's no point dwelling on the past anymore. Um, you know, it's all about looking forward and... and that's why I believe this club can push on. Uh, I like, you know, like the manager says. I know results the last couple haven't been great, but I believe that still the the team can progress up the league, and hopefully I can I can contribute to help. Sam, you, this is your second uh, attacking signing of the month, obviously. That that's clearly where you felt this side were lacking when you came in. Well, it's, it's it's easy to see that um, over the season, if you what you need to achieve and um, and the amount of goals that you need to score, I think that. Uh, uh, well, the mathematical equations tell us that if you look over the last five or six years, if you're scoring this amount of goals, uh, you would finish around or can finish around in this position. And there's obviously a lot of other factors that have to be taken into consideration, and how many goals you concede or how many clean sheets you keep. But uh, I think, I think that in the main, we would fall behind uh, goals scored to finish in ninth or eighth. So we then have to improve our clean sheet record massively to then achieve that position, like you mean. So so adding goal power and, and creativity is obviously very important. Not forgetting that we all have to defend when we lose the ball as well as create when we've got it. So that's not a happy balance for us at the moment. You know, having expanded a little bit on our um creative opportunities which were were obviously difficult to come by but we were still getting results having tried to create that we've slumped on the defensive side and started losing matches again so i've still got to try and strike that balance up starting on saturday hopefully and speaking of saturday we've, we've not won back-to-back -back premier league games since august what are you expecting uh, i i expect a very very tough match i think that um west brom have been performing far greater than the results suggested it, even when we went down there um, to play them just a few weeks ago uh, it was um, it was a really tough match for us one we, we had to dig out with a nil-nil and uh, <coughs> excuse me one we had to dig out nil-nil and we had a little bit of luck to be honest with you so I think I'm expecting a really t tough football match and uh, like every every game at this level and particularly this time of the season once we've got through the Christmas period and coming out the other end, it, it gets even more and more difficult mentally for the players as well as, well as physically. And those who are the strongest mentally and physically will come through in the end. So hopefully we've got built up our resilience and we're more and determined and dogged to, to push on through to the end of the season now. Theo, yeah, you've spoken about how difficult the decision it was to leave Arsenal. I'm just wondering, when did the realisation dawn on you that you probably had to leave? Um, you know, I've, well, since from this season, when you you look at the minutes that I've played, um, considering obviously the season before scoring, you know, nineteen goals, it was um, I felt I wasn't part of it, and it was just getting the timing right and when I could go. Like I say, I had a you know young family I had to think about as well, but you know, as a as a personal football career and decision, um, I felt it was you know time now. Um, and yeah, that's that's what it was really, and it, ha it happened so quickly as well. Like I say, the way it all sort of developed and not really been able to say my goodbyes yet. But you know, I'm pleased it's it's all it's all dealt with, and I can just get get to know the teammates and uh, and get going really. Yeah. Okay, just last one here. It's worth saying as well, Sam, but before the game, obviously, Anthony. Cyril. Yeah, I was just 
I was uh, mentioned in my programme notes, of course, and I think that, um, you know, I played against Cyril many times in, in my year, of course, and, but for me it was such a shock because I'd seen him with his wife at West Brom just a few weeks ago and he looked so well, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and obviously it was a great shock that, um, that I heard that he died and uh, died so suddenly, so obviously my sympathies go to um, his wife and all the family and all the relatives.